Hello, good people. This is the janitor, and I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Wash, Rinse, Repeat. We last left off with your successful setting up of your test environment. Today, we're going to move the ball a little further in the right direction. Let's jump right into setting up our first virtual attack box. So, what is the attack box? For our utilization, let's remember we are setting up multiple computers virtually within one test environment, which is located within your personal computer. The attack box is what I would like you to think of as a metaphorical treasure chest. The treasure chest itself being the operating system. However, as we know, it's not totally about what is outside, but what is inside that counts. The inside is where the treasure or the loot lies. So in this case, the treasures are a multitude of offensive tools your attack applications. Now let's not get confused here. The operating system can be Windows or Linux and as we progress you will see that both operating systems are viable options. What we are most interested in however are the tools. Our goal is to simulate an attacker so let's ensure that our treasure chest contains all of the tools we will use to successfully meet our needs. Now, we can choose to manually add tools to our chest, but let's be honest, as a hacker, our goal is to think smarter and never harder than we need to. So how do we choose an attack box? Let's think about it. We won't always have this, but one great quality that I think we all can agree on is free is always great. In our case, I would consider looking for an operating system that is open source. Another good to have would be that the operating system, our treasure chest, come preloaded with the proper loot. Remember that that's our tools. And finally, it would be wise to utilize a package that has the support of others if and when you get stuck. We're looking for a community that aids in enhancing our treasure chest. One offering that meets all of these requirements is Kali Linux. Kali contains what we need to get the job done. So enough talk. Let's get this set up. Let's open our browser of preference and browse to the Kali Linux download webpage. As always, a direct link will be posted in the description. As you can see here, there are a few options in regards to the versions. For most modern computer systems, let's choose to use the Kali 64-bit ISO. Ensure that you select ISO and not torrent. This download may take some time depending on your internet connection. So while it's downloading, let's prepare the virtual environment for our attack box's arrival. Search for VirtualBox and get the test environment brought back up. This should look familiar. Uh, let's go ahead and click on the new icon at the top left and let's add a name to this operating system. You can name it whatever you would like, but for the purposes of this video, we will name it Kali Linux Attack. You can see that VirtualBox automatically fills in the rest of the information. Let's go ahead and click on continue. In regards to memory, if your personal computer can spare it, I'd prefer that you put about two gigs of memory here. That should be uh, 2048 megabytes. Into the hard disk, let's just click create a virtual disk now. Uh, and we're going to create a simple virtual box disk image. In respect to the hard drive utilization, we will select dynamically allocated. If your hard drive size allows for it, let's change the hard drive size to about 32 gigabytes. The test environment is now ready for our install of Kali Linux download. As you can see here, our download is still going. Now that our download has completed, let's go back to the Oracle VM VirtualBox Manager and select the settings button for our Kali Linux attack box. There are a few things here we need to configure before actually starting Kali. Let's go to the storage tab. You will notice that there is an IDE controller here with an empty CD icon under it. 
uh, let's click on that icon this is a virtual blank CD DVD drive if you were to compare this to a physical computer now let's move over to that CD icon in the attributes window and select the choose virtual optical disk file a window will open and you will need to browse to where your Kali Linux ISO file downloaded select it and hit open the last two steps in settings we need to perform is setting up our network adapters on the first network adapter we need to ensure it is attached to the bridged adapter and secondly adapter 2 should be enabled but the difference here is to ensure the NIC is attached to the internal network as you can see here the default name is INTNET but I prefer my network be janitor net. So let's click on OK as it's now time to boot our box. Clicking on the start arrow at the top of the screen will get things rolling. You'll see a list of options and let's arrow down and choose graphical install. Any messages that VirtualBox may advise of, uh, simply give it a read and check the do not show this message again and continue. Let's go through the first opening questions by clicking continue to select the defaults. Or uh, set the settings to your needs. Obviously I'm choosing English as my language, the United States as my location, and American English as my keyboard configuration. The next item of concern is to select our primary network interface, which will be the top option. Go ahead and select it and click continue. Let's keep the default for the system host name. In our case, this is Kali. Select continue. And here in the domain name, you can make it anything that you would like, as long as it ends in a .net, a .com, .org, something of that sort. Then here we have the password fields. It may go without saying, but please remember this password. After you set it, um, let's hit continue. You can then select your desired location for your time zone and select continue. Here, let's choose to partition our disk with the guided use entire disk option and click continue. Kali will then confirm the disk we will be using. There should only be one option here, so select that and let's hit continue. All files in one partition is what we need here for the partitioning. Finish partitioning and write changes to disk. Click continue. Keep an eye on the install as you will receive a question on the package manager using a network mirror. Select yes and continue. For most home networks, you will not be configuring a proxy, so let's click continue and leave this field blank. During the installation of Grub, you will be asked if you would like to install the Grub bootloader to the master boot record. Select yes and hit continue. Finally, we are at the last step. Now, this last setting can mess you up if you are not careful. Just ensure you select the hard drive dev SDA and you'll be okay. Then click continue. The install will complete and you will have one more continue to click. The test environment will be rebooted and you will be greeted with the login screen. Type the username as root and the password as the password you set earlier the one I said make sure to remember and your Kali Linux is ready for action I know the first thing I'm doing changing this wallpaper to something a little more my style today we put Kali Linux our attack box into our virtual environment 
Although we haven't gotten hands-on yet, what we're setting up is the foundation upon which everything else will be built. Thank you for watching, and if you like this video and found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up, comment and subscribe to be notified of new videos and when they're posted. I'm the janitor, and I thank you for watching this episode of Wash, Rinse, Repeat. Remember, stay focused, never quit.